In this video, we'll see some examples of equations that are quadratic in form. Another way to think about these kinds of problems that the, is that they are quadratic equations that are in disguise somehow. Let's look at our first example. So when we look at this equation, it looks really nasty. But if we squint our eyes a little bit, we might notice that we've got x plus 2 in parentheses here, and also x plus 2 in parentheses here. So the trick that we're going to do to solve this equation, now we don't have to use this trick. What we could do is just multiply out x plus 2 squared, multiply all this out, multiply all this out, collect all our like terms, factor, and do all that stuff. But it's going to turn out that this problem is a lot easier than that by using this trick. So the trick is to let u, so I'm going to invent a new variable that I'm going to call u, and I'm going to let that equal x plus 2. So that means that I can rewrite this equation as u squared minus 3u minus 4 equals 0. And hopefully you agree that that's a much nicer looking equation. In fact, it's a pretty simple quadratic. We can factor it. We're looking for two numbers that multiply together to be negative 4 and add together to be negative 3. Doesn't take us too long to figure out that that's negative 4 and positive 1. So that means that our solutions are u equals 4 and u equals negative 1. But we're not quite done with the problem because u was the variable that I invented. If somebody gave me this equation, they're asking me to solve for x. And I can't hand them back a value of u and think that I've really answered their question. So we do need to solve the original variable x. But that's not too bad because u was just a name for x plus 2. So now all we have to do is solve these equations for x. That's not too bad. Subtract 2 from both sides, we get x equals 2. Subtract 2 from both sides here, we get x equals negative 3. So those are our solutions. All right, what about this one? x to the fourth plus x squared minus 6. This one doesn't really look like a quadratic either, but again, if we squint our eyes and think about it a little bit, x squared is there, and then x to the fourth we can think of as x squared squared. If I square x squared, I get x to the fourth. So this time the trick is to let u equal x squared. And when I do that, what I end up with is u squared plus u minus 6 equals 0. And again, that's a quadratic that's not too bad to solve. It factors as u plus 3 times u minus 2. That gives us the solutions u equals negative 3 and u equals 2. But again, those aren't really solutions to my original equation. Those are these values of u, which was the variable that I invented. So I have to go back to plug in what u actually was. Well, u was x squared. So my solutions really are x squared equals negative 3 and x squared equals 2. Okay, what about x squared equals negative 3? What values of x make that equation true? Well, there aren't any values of x that make that true. We can never square a real number and end up with negative 3 as a result. So this part of my solution actually represents no solutions to my original equation. But my other solution, x squared equals 2, I certainly can get solutions there. If I take the square root of both sides, I get two solutions, plus or minus the square root of 2. And those are my solutions to my original equation, and so I'm done. 